Well, hello and how are you? Hey, this is Shenandoah Briscoe coming to you live right here in St. Charles, Missouri. Yes, sir, this is blog 138. Yes, that's right, blog 138. Went out there in the uh, sunshine again today. Uh, hold on, let me check something real quick. Today is Monday, isn't it? Monday the 22th. Yeah, okay. Oh, that's what's wrong. Hold on. We're going to fix something for you. There, how's that? No, that's not right. This is not 1231. Yeah, there we go. 622. Okay, now then. Sorry about that. I had to fix up an old calendar for you again just to let you know what day it is and all that stuff. Well, you know, here I was out there down by the river again today and <laughs> ran into a friend of mine who used to hang out down at his house for a while, but he done, done ended up with a situation where he doesn't live down there no more. But we talked for a while down there on the river. And I got to thinking about one time when I was uh, fishing, you know, and I'd worked myself. I threw out that line, and I'd been waiting and waiting, and what the, I thought that line get a snug on it. Well, I watched it, and it snug down once, and then it snug down twice, and it snug down that third time, and I reached over, and I yanked pull up so good and hard and I was reeling it in and I'd pull up and I'd reel in and I'd pull her up and I'd reel her in and boy that thing was heavy it was getting getting to where I was thinking I was going to lose it you know down there on the river you got some pretty heavy current and some of them fishes are smart they like to run with that current well you just got to work with them so anyway I'd just wait her out there and then I'd pull her back and I'd reel her in some more and I worked that thing for a good 20-30 minutes and I was getting tired I was building up sweat well after a bit I just thought man what am I going to do this thing's killing me so I finally worked that thing up for about an hour and all of a sudden I got that thing right up there and it was coming up on the bench on the right there on the beach and I pulled it in and lo and behold it was a tree it wasn't a big tree, but it was a tree. Well, I worked an awful long time for a tree. I was not happy. You know what a wood bass is? Would be a bass, only it's wood. No. I wasn't happy at all. Not happy at all. You ever been fishing? You ever catch yourself a snag? I caught me a snag one time. Broke my line. You ever been fishing and snag fishing? Catch you something on purpose, like uh, what are them things? Spoonbills, spoonbill. Now people go snag fishing for a spoonbill, and the way they do that is they use this big old huge treble hook. I'm talking huge. I'm saying it's almost three inches across that treble hook is. But anyway, they troll that and they just kind of hang that off the back of the boat and they roll up and down in these uh shallows in between the uh, Usually around here it's Howell's Island, out there near Howell's Island. And uh, they go back and forth through there, and they're trying to hook up on some spoonbill. Well, the thing about that is you can't cast out uh, regular spoonbill food because, well, they're vegetarians. They don't eat meat. They don't eat chicken. They don't eat fish. They don't eat worms. They eat cabbage. Now, I could see you throwing out a head of lettuce, but... I don't see you hooking one on no head of lettuce. So you just got to troll and you got to snag. And boy, when you get them, boy, that is fun. That's just about like working a marlin in the middle of the ocean. You got to ride that chair, and ride that uh, heavy uh, uh, ocean pole, and you got to rock that bad boy back. And as you're coming down, you got to reel, 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 reel and then rock her back again and real, 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 real. I'm telling you, ooh, boy, if I'd have had a muscle spasm, 
when I was fishing, I could have got that there log up a lot faster, that's for sure. But, no, sir. Uh, that was before I hit the chair, yes, sir. Way back in the good old days when I used to fish a lot. Now, I do have a fishing apparatus for my wheelchair, but I can't seem to find it right now, so I guess I'm going to have to get me another one from the old Veterans Administration. Over there at them Jefferson Barracks, I'll just tell them I need some recreational devices. Yes, sir. Recreational device like a like a uh, caster and a rod and reel to go on that caster. Yes, sir. The last time I had one, I have to redesign the program uh, something on it. And that's why I don't have it right now because I had tried to redesign the spring system. And I s loaned it to somebody to help me design that spring system. And, well, they didn't do it. The thing's called an easy cast. And, well, what you do is you fling it up off your armrest there, and it flings out your bobber and your line and everything. Well, that's all right, except for the problem with it is that it, uh, it's supposed to... It, it, once you've flung it out there, you have to latch down the thing to hold your to keep your uh, pole out straight. Well, here's my situation with that: the uh, latch thingy is I'm trying to hold the pole out straight, and every time I let go of the pole to flip, get my hand over to hit the latch, pole would rock back and it would tighten that up and drag that bobber and all whatnot right back in. So I'm like, okay, having an argument with it. So I was going to design a spring to keep that latch to flop over automatically. But I never got it designed yet. Well, yeah, I never got my piece back either. So there you have it. Anyway, maybe a rubber band. I'm thinking maybe a rubber band. I don't know. But one of these days I'm going to figure it out. That's right. One of these days, I'm going to figure it out. Anyway, I'll just order a new one from the VA and see if they'll send one out to me because, well, hey, it's fishing time. And I'm sure that if I go down to the river, I can rely on the help of strangers to be able to bait me up and let me fling her on out there. You know what I'm saying? I used to go with my son a lot, but now that he's in the Army, why? That there doesn't occur much anymore. I could probably get uh, another friend, uh, one of my roommate's grandchildren, to go with me, take me fishing. But we got to get him a license first, so we'll have to worry about that, Bridge, when we, when we come to it. Anyhow, let's see what else we're going to talk about today. We got a few minutes to talk, and I don't really want to try to sing because, you know, whenever I get into that singing and everything, it. It's just some days I got the voice for it, some days I don't have the voice for it. And, well, today I don't necessarily feel like I've got the voice for it. I've got the low tones going on and the dragon going on, and, well, you know how that goes. You know, if you if you don't feel much up to singing, if you don't think you're going to sound good, chances are you're not going to sound good because even if you think you're sounding good and you listen to it back, you don't you realize how bad you've tortured the people that you've done that you've done done a bunch of singing for now i do like singing in church but then again i sing so low that nobody can hear me so whenever i'm a singing whenever i'm a singing nobody even knows uh well they know but they can't hear me all that well unless of course i do find myself uh finding a little phrase that I can punch up a little bit and then I can sing loud enough because I'll fill the lungs full of air and I'll just put that uh, part of the tune right on out there. Yes, sir. Put it right on out there nice and loud. Well, as loud as I can get, which ain't very loud, I'm telling you. You're probably talking about as loud as I can get right here, right now. But that's about as loud as it gets, folks. I sing because I'm happy I sing 
when I am sad, oh, I sing all of the while, but that's about as loud as it gets. Born on a mountain top in Tennessee, raised in the woods so he knowed every tree, killed him a bar when he was only three. Anyway, I think I skipped around on that one. Davy, Davy Crockett, man of the wild frontier. That's the way that one goes. I could sing that one. That one my voice might be might even be able to do. But I don't want that. Don't want that. Wouldn't want to put you all through it. Besides that, I've only got about five minutes more to rant or to just kind of talk. I sat there and downloaded a whole bunch of pictures today, and boy, I tell you what, I'm nearly worn out. Yeah, I say I'm worn out because, well, you download, and you got to, I, everything I do is with that little silver spot right there on the end of my microphone. See it right there? Oh, that little spot right there? Well, that controls my mouse. And you'll see me moving my head all over the place a lot. And the reason I'm doing that is because my cursor is right in front of my face and it itches my nose. And or I feel like it's done plugged up my nose and poked me in the eyeball. And so I'm moving around. It's not really, but you know, my cursor's there and it drives me nuts. So I wiggle around to move it. And you'll also notice me going up like that. Well, the reason I go up like that is because I have a, a docked station up there, and that docked station is called a dragger. And dragger is basically a um, point-and-click type device. Uh, it's a dwell-clicking type device. So my original setup was called dwell-clicker. And actually what you do is you rest your mouse over the uh, on, on and off uh, button and which is called dwelling if you want to get technical about it resting it over there in a stopped motion would be dwelling over it and you dwell over it for a few seconds and it will click and it'll come on with a beep in your ear so that you'll know that you've got your mouse activated and a little red light will come on and let you know also now if you dwell over something else it's a right click at that point in time. Now, if you want, no, I'm sorry, it's a left click at that point in time. It's always a left click. Now, if you want to, you can go up and you can dwell over another symbol, which is a, uh, which is a picture of a mouse with the left click button lit up. And what you can do there is you can dwell over that symbol and then that will put you in a drag mode so that you can go and draw, dwell over something and once it clicks on it, you can move it across the screen and drop it somewhere else. So that's how you drag and click. And then there's also a double click and you can just hover over that. And once you've dwelled over it for a few seconds, you can go back over on your uh, on your uh, monitor screen, and you can dwell over something like a game or uh, one of your programs. And while you're dwelling over it, it will double click and it will open that program up for you. And then there's also a uh, uh, if you dwell over the uh, left click button once and then you dwell over it again it will lock it so that you can do multiple dragging and you can drag things from here over to there and like in my case with downloading all those pictures I had to drag them from the download file into another photo album which is why my neck is so sore because I'm doing this and this and this, and this, and this, and phew, it was wearing me flat out. But that's all right. That being said, hey, that's how dwelling, 
That's how a, dra a dragon, a dragger, well, a uh, clicker, dragger actually works. But you know what? That's my time. So we ran it on out. This here, Shenandoah Briscoe saying hello and how are you? You know, God loves you and so do I. And so be blessed in Jesus' name. Have a great night. We'll see you tomorrow, all right? Well, all righty then.